<laughs> and this is going to be somewhat strange. First, I'm going to read one of mine, a previously recorded piece entitled The Master's Cat, which is a very straight laced, you know, written after a story that was read to me when I was uh, 16 years old. And uh, was by a guy named Curtis Cost at Cat Camp Madison Felicia, New York. Now, then afterwards, I'm going to be I'm going to read a tribute to myself, by written by a, uh, a very uh, an up and coming young poet who's uh, just uh, published a book. I'm not going to use his name, but here is his book. I want you to. Um, uh, I'll show his name real briefly. <laughs> I want you to, uh, well, go to Amazon and um, put in the little search thingy there uh, the name of the book and get it. I highly recommend it. Okay, also, um, you can uh, also get Bree, Bree's book. Where's your book here? It's got to be somewhere. Come on, Bree, where's your book? I want to plug it. Here it is. No, it's not here. Anyway, later for that. I'm going to um, read The Master's Cat. And then I'm going to go right into the tribute entitled The Silence of the Cats. <laughs> you be prepared for to go on a ride. Hang on to your seatbelts. Okay? Here it goes. The music fades, the lights draw low, the swelling din that must subside, with joyous music finally stopped. It is the day that the master died. The studio lights fill every nook, except for the chair where the master sat. The last light finally reveals the truth. In that seat there now sits a cat. Not just any cat, but the dearest friend whom the master told his secrets to. This stoic furry special guest sits poised and ready for his interview. The announcer steps to the front in haste, impeccably groomed and so nattily dressed, apparently combed with buttered toast. He leers with contempt at his special guest. No friends nor family of any kind, so that his work might carry on. No successor to this calling able to create such joy with his baton. Just this self-centered fuzzball seated here, who alone had known the master's care, this useless postule always with him, at his side always, everywhere. Nothing to give and nothing to lose. Nothing to gain, what an awful case. The master's secrets in this cat's keeping, gone forever, such a terrible waste. He feels not the slightest tinge of sadness, no, no grief is evident on his whiskered face. The master's gift in this cat's keeping, gone forever, what a huge disgrace. As old cement head ends his show, not the slightest noise does the kitty make. The silence fell, the, the lights were dimmed, the silence fell, as the master's cat seems wide awake. The banging of chairs, the clanging of props, the master's theme would long subside. When they arrived at the master's seat, they found that the cat indeed had died. Drenched with grief, still wet with tears, this lifeless furball had finally spoken. In life the creature could ill express that the dam had burst, his heart had broken. From the torture of inconsolable loss that the wretched human heart can't see to the still wet teardrops on the master's seat, the master's cat was finally free. Those fading lights, the far-off strains, the din that would at last subside. But the small sick heart, concealed from view, this day the master's cat has died. The dying creature could not describe 
all the music he'd heard and the places he'd been. But this furry corpse will indeed attest to the fathomless grief churning deep within. That cannot be heard nor understood, for the priceless love dwells deep inside. The bond between these kindred souls lives on after, even after both have died. Okay, now, I want you to put the lotion, rub the lotion on your skin, or else you'll get the hose again. <laughs> and put the lotion on, in the basket. And while you're at it, go home and get your effing shine box. Okay? <laughs> Because you're about to be regaled with a tribute to yours truly. And it is the strangest tribute, but I am honored nonetheless. I am thrilled, tickled to read this. And I hope you enjoy it as much as I do. Thank you so much. It's called The Silence of the Cats. So it began long ago with the darkest tales, myths call The Silence of the Cats whose black affairs and patches of hair became lotioned after shaved to snatch. Atop Scratchpo's summit stood a sinister man, looking down at Kitty Cat Town. Horny, angry, and with scurvy from dirty New Jersey, insatiably stroking with a cock in his hand. Alas! Only such an evil monster could bear the title of David, yet every foe that fears him knows Nevis to be the name of hatred. Nevis scoured the land of Kitty Litter, searching with boner for victims of love. Little did he know that he would get her, falling down hard from a stork above. Finally a fine feline he could peel all night, cackling and fashioning a dress of its fur, of its skin, a cat with whom he could attack and bite if obedience to its master was not given. Oh, precious kitty, you look so, so divine, meticulously moistening all of your paws. Tell me, Clarice. How does its lotion shine without being scratched in by its claws? I covet the feeling of your lotion fur. I want to launch myself into its warmth. If I fucking know anything, that is sure. I want to make hardcore kitty cat porn. So come here, kitty. Get in the well where it rubs the tuna on its skin. It's getting me horny, can't you tell? It rubs it on, or gets the house again. It must do as it's told, or again, it gets the house. It scratches up the walls, it puts lotion on its nose. Keep begging me from down in its box for shine. Now meow out loud if it wants to run. Horror! Now it must watch me tuck the cock between my legs, so I become Nevis the Buffalo Woman once more. Nevis the Buffalo Woman, having finally appeared, spoke this to the reflection, looking back from the mirror. My fuck me! Fuck me! After pink lip gloss, had been thoroughly applied. The creature with she features eagerly replied, Fuck me so hard. Silencing now the queer nightmare came a rap upon the front door. And I, Agent Starling, my baby darling, never said snarling, Welcome to the party, your pussy adds one more. I'm not a well man for reading this, but uh, I tell you right now, I'm I'm Sigmund Freud compared to this guy. <laughs> you 
Now, I'm a poster boy for mental health compared compared to this guy who rubs the lotion on his skin. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. That, that was a, a walk on the, the perturbed, demented, deranged, ridiculous side. Thank you so much for watching. Okay? <laughs> Please forgive me for I know not what I do. Thank you. Are you out there, you little shit? Come and get it for me.